But here I'm going to be doing a complete walkthrough of the June 2017 C34, okay? And just like my previous ones and at least my most recent videos, um, I'm going to, you know, of course, have all the solutions out here ready and just literally guide you through every single step, okay? So, without further ado, let's go. Now, one, a curve C has the given equation, okay? So, it's just a mixture of X and Y's and set to zero. Find an equation for the tangent to C at the point 2, 4, giving the answer in, the, in, this, in this type of form, where A, B, and C are integers. Now, what they want you here is firstly, a tangent to C is just a simple straight line equation, i.e. y equals mx plus c. Now, because it's a tangent to C, we just naturally need to find a specific gradient at the point 2, 4. That's really it. And to get the gradient m, well, it's just a case of differentiating this and setting the values of 2, 4 into that derivative equation. Now, differentiating this is, is overall quite straightforward. You just have to do it term by term. So looking at the first one head on, we've got 3x squared. Differentiating 3x squared, you can get 6x. Now for 2xy, I did on the right side, we need to use a product rule, guys. So you could do a head on, why not? But I always do product rule. So just let one of them be u. So I chose u as 2x and v as y. Differentiating both of these, you get 2 and with differentiating y, you get dy of dx. The reason why is because we need in terms of um, x. So this is probably dv. This is dv of dx. That's why it's dy of dx. Anyway, long, using the product rule, just multiply and sum them up. So we're going to have, and I always do it from the right, v times u prime, which will give us 2y, plus 2x and dy dx gives us the term of it, 2x dy dx. And just keep differentiating the rest. When you do 2y squared, just drop the power 2 down, and you get 4y like you do for x. And because you do, you're dealing with, with a y, times it by dy over dx, so to make it easy. And then finally, differentiating 4 gives you 0 and 0, well, 0. Now, here's the easy part. Now, all you have to do is literally collect the like terms, so collect the dy dx terms like this, make dy dx a subject, throw it to the other side, and then plug in the values of 2 and 4. When you plug in the values 2 and 4, you get you should get 5 over 3, and this is the gradient, guys. So that is our m value. Now, going back to the original equation here, we said the tangency is y equals mx plus c. Now, all you got to do is plug in the y, y over th um, the, the 5 over 3 for the y equals mx plus c in into the m slot. Now, this is your equation thus far. And because we're working at the point 2, 4, let's plug in the values of x equals 2 and y equals 4. And when you do that, you should get 4 equals 5 over 3 times 2, which is 10 over 3, and then plus c. And doing this, you can now solve for c, which is 2 thirds. So yeah, so this, this kind of method, I think, is, is, is very intuitive, it's very easy. You could use the standard y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, or y equals mx plus c. I always use this. Now finally, when you have c equals 2 over 3, plug it in into the, into the y equals mx plus c equation, and voila. And then put it into the given form. So just times 3 across, across, subtract y to the other side, or 3y, and you have it. Done. So, yeah. This is so far the, how the paper is going to be for out. For the for the longer for the longer segment questions, I'm going to do over very over at least a couple pages. So yeah, if you're enjoying this thus far, please give me a like, subscribe, share to your friends, and otherwise, let's move on. Okay, question two, guys. So use integration by parts to find the exact value of the natural log of x over x squared from one to e. Okay, with respect to x. Now straight off the bat. You know, just to make your life easy, I'm going to rewrite x squared and put on the baseline. So it'll be x to the negative 2. So I'm going to bring it up. Okay. Now, in this case, because we're using by parts, we need to choose a suitable u. Now, first things first, I'll tell you what you can't, what you shouldn't do. You should never let the, the, the log x be v prime, the dv over dx. Reason why is because this is so hard to integrate and it'll make things worse. Now, we always say this is u because when you have a so like literally one rule of thumb is that when you have a natural log always use e always use it as u and then let the other term be v prime or dv of dx so that's what i did over here and just a quick recap the general formula to integrate by parts is uv minus the integral of u prime v and you can just use it from here so let's do this so letting u equal the natural log x differentiating this gives us one over x and for v prime x negative 2, integrating this, drop the power, increase, add, add 1 to the power to the minus 1, drop it down, so you get negative 1 times it will be a negative x to the power of minus 1, or minus 1 over x, up to you. Now using the formula uv, so times in 
this term here u with v we get ln x times minus 1 over x can be written in this form and then you, you just literally plug in the values of 1 to e minus and then using the u prime v where u is 1 of x and v prime uh, sorry v is minus 1 of x plug it in and then simplify this you should get a positive 1 of x squared and that's it guys this is just easy steps now now all you do is evaluate each each um, segment so evaluating the first half let's if you plug in the e you get ln e which is 1 and this becomes e so 1 over minus 1 over e which is here plug in 1 to the equation you get ln 1 which is 0 and that all cancels down to 0 and finally, minus 1 of e plus 0 is this. Doing the same for this one, integrating this term, 1 over x squared, very straightforward. You get the same result as you did over here, which is minus 1 over x. Plug in your e's and 1's, and eventually you should get minus 1 over e plus 1. Yeah, and that's it. Now you just um, add them up. So minus 1 over e plus minus 1 over e plus 1 should be over here. So I put it nicely on this side. And then sorting it, I'll make it look like this form. You get 1 minus 2 over e easy easy guys yeah oh so <laughs> so far so good guys if you're enjoying this again please give me a like if you haven't already and um yeah just uh, share this out with your, your friends anyway let's move on to number three okay so it says that the function g is defined by the following okay where we got the domains of x which is all positive values so this means x values can only be positive i.e the domain now find the range of g so the range of g is essentially what values g can take for a given x so what i did here on the table and what you should always do if they give you like a certain limit or something just start popping in values i usually just start from you know like powers of 10 so so 0 0.1 1 10 100 and so on and i and I try to have an idea where these values can be usually if you have like a simple like equation you can you can graph it and just look at the equation and check out like check out the height of it check out the wax you see how high the curve goes and where where the limits are if there is any limits in this case if you plug in the x values you get g values of these if you notice carefully it seems to slow down towards three and since we already know one part of domain is greater than zero we can see that the range for, for positive values of x will always give us at least the bare minimum positive value so it's going to go all the way up to three so this essentially means that if you made x to, I don't know, infinity or just made it really big, your gx will eventually go to 3. So we can say that gx lies between 0 and 3. It's 0 because we know it's positive. When you plug in a positive number, this is always positive. And we know if you put in a number, a really big number, it will, it will eventually cut off at 3. So the answer would be gx is between 0 and 3. Easy stuff, really. Okay, next one. So find the inverse function and stays domain. Well, I'll tell you right now, the domain of, a, of the inverse function is always the same as, as the range of the normal function. So if this is the, ra the, the range, then the domain would be between 0 and 3 for the inverse. Makes sense, they invert. Now, let's have a look. So to find the inverse function, I always do this nice formula. I always say, okay, let gy equal x. So I just rewrite this in terms of y, gy, and make equal to some x. Now, now replacing the gy we have we're gonna have 6y over 2y plus 3 and now we just have to make y the subject so just pretty much solve for y so times this term across so you're gonna have um, 6y equals 2xy plus 3x now what i would do for this term is to collect all the y terms on the left so i subtracted 2xy across to get this expression here factorize the y out to make it look something simple like this and literally just slip underneath so you can have 3x over 6 minus 2x and voila this is pretty much the function we require which is our inverse yeah that's it guys all done now for part c what do we have so the function find the function ggx <laughs> i love that writing answer as a single fraction in simplest form now what this implies is that we need to literally put gx the second part into the gx into into the g function so this goes into itself so essentially you replace the x here with gx so the equation so this x is going to be itself 6x over 2x plus 3 for here and here so it looks a bit like this literally it looks a bit like that now to simplify this well hmm, it's just the algebra skills i put a little tip here which literally says clear the fraction guys so my advice for these kind of questions always multiply up and down by the lower part of the fraction the the smaller fraction so since we've got 2x plus 3 times up and down by 2x plus 3 if you do that 
this cancels out and you're just left with 6 times 6x which is 36x if you times this side, this bottom half by 2x plus 3, that cancels out and you times this by 2x plus 3, you get an equation that looks a bit like this 2 times 6x is 12x, 3 times 2x plus 3 is over here and that's it guys, now you just um, tidy up so expanding this and then collecting with the other with 12x, you should get 18x plus 9 and realizing that we can simplify this further by dividing 9, we finally get our result of 4x over 2x plus 1 Whew, not bad not bad so far anyway um yeah so leave it if you guys again find this helpful let me know otherwise let's move on to number four well these questions are long aren't they <laughs> now let's now function fx let's what's they have here so fx equals um, 27 over 3 minus 5x all squared okay now it wants us to find the series expansion of fx in ascending powers of x up to x cubed. Okay, this is a binomial expansion. Okay, that's what we're, we're going to use a binomial method. Now to do this, first thing so we need to write it using this red form I put here, which is one plus ax power n. Now the, unfortunately this is underneath, so we need to raise it up. And to do it, since the power is two, if we put it on the baseline, it would be a negative two powers, a bit like that. Now, another problem is that it's not in the 1 plus form, or at least this, this coefficient of 3 needs to be a 1. So what I did here is I factorized the 3 out. And when you factorize 3 out, you're, you're essentially taking the negative power with it. So it would be 3 to negative 2 out. Because if you did like a big bracket and took it out, you're going to distribute negative 2 to the inside and the outside. So that's why the power negative 2 is there. Now finally, when you, when you, when then now you're just collecting together, so all of this becomes this term here. So take 3 out of both, times it by 27, and it simplifies to 3 times all of these lot. Okay, so far so good. Now let's use the series expansion, yeah? So if you guys aren't familiar, it's, it's dead easy. Just make it, the equation look like this, and then this is the general form. It's always the, the power over the first, like the power over one factor times ax, which is a in this case minus 5 over 3, plus the next term, which is n times, so the power times 1 minus back, over 2 factor and then so on this is quite easy to follow I mean if you always make it look like this it should be easy in the exam now let's do it so the very first term we're gonna have a 1 if you take we're just gonna use a 1 minus 5x over 3 part the next term would be n which is minus 2 over 1 factor times ax which is minus 5 over 3x easy plus now the next term is gonna be n times n minus 1, so minus 2 times minus 3 over 2 factorial, and so on. And then ax to the power 2, and then again, the next one will be similar. It will be n times n minus 1 and n minus 2, and all of that over 3 factorial. And we just multiply against ax, this time to the power 3, and so on. And it always goes up, so it will be 3, then 4, and then you've got 4 terms underneath, 3 factorial, 4 factorial. Really, it's, it's very easy. Now, where are we? So yeah, now they want us to also simplify each coefficient, yeah? So literally, just bang this in the calculator. To do that properly, I would ignore the x. I would omit it from the calculator. So put minus 2 over 1 factor times, in a bracket, minus 5 over 3. Doing this gives you 10 over 3. And then stick an x. Do the same here. Omit the x, put the square, omit the x, so everything without the x, including the square. You should get 25 over 3. Same thing, everything without the x. 527 and just take the, the the correct terms and then multiply everything by 3 and voila we should have 3 plus 10x plus 25 squared plus 500 over 9x cubed done <laughs> not bad now next one part b <laughs> yeah so so far good guys if you guys are following this seriously you're amazing <laughs> and i and really i hope you guys do well now so i put the answer over here just to keep it easy so using the answer to part A, to find the series expansion in ascending powers of x up to and including the x term of this, let's find it. So let's go ahead and find the series expansion, yeah? Okay, um, da -da -da -da, let me think. Yeah, so what's happening here and here? So in the mask, you do it a bit differently. And, and the way I'm going to do it is that I'm just going to look at the two patterns and just see how does it compare to fx, okay? So you got a plus 5x and this has a negative 5x. So essentially, it's the same function as fx except now it's be, x is being reversed. It's, been, it's pretty much um, the sign has changed. So you stick a negative x. So gx is really fx when it's negative. So f minus x. Now in terms of equation, if this is fx, 
you just replace x with negative x so that means all the x's here have a negative x inside <coughs> Man, i'm becoming kind of sick so yeah just expand it guys so minus 10 times minus x to give us this minus x squared is positive minus x cubed is negative and so on so it, it just alternates now for the second question notice how when you had 3 minus 5x this is 3 minus x this one has reduced by 5 so essentially it's literally x over 5 it's hx the same as f when it's x over 5 it's just 5 times smaller so again like the previous one replace the x in this equation here by x over 5 for everything and then just literally um open it up expand it and you should finally get this result here easy seriously question four is, is, is quite straightforward if you can spot this little patterns and believe me you're flying mm -hmm.